End of the home stretch of the program on halftime, and we're joined by Bill King, the sports radio host, Nashville Sports Radio, 6 to 9 every morning, and our good friend every Wednesday. Bill, how you doing today? What's new? Hey, boys. What's going on? Well, you know, just uh, just some, a little, little nervous time here. Um, I, I wonder what you think of my, my theory here. I think the Big Ten actually did everybody a favor by coming out with their announcement Friday about – only playing conference games. Maybe they jump the gun, but at the very least now, it feels that other conferences know what the playing field will could look like in the future. So I think it, it probably pushes conferences a little further along to make their decision because they know, you know, there's two conferences that are just staying within themselves. I wonder what you took from the Big Ten's announcement last week. Probably about the same. Um, I don't know if I thought they were doing anybody a favor, but I know what you're saying. The SEC's holding out for a Hail Mary, which which right now doesn't appear to be available. I don't see a playbook that's got a workable Hail Mary in it right now. So and we had a doctor on again this morning from Atlanta, good, good guy, and it's pretty bleak. Uh, and he's a huge sports fan, a massive college football, basketball fan, all of that. And wasn't really uh, it wasn't the conversation, guys, that I wanted to have, frankly. Yeah. But it was a real conversation. But, yeah, the SEC is going to hold out through the end of July, somewhere in there. And then they're going to have to come out and lay out the conference-only model. And then after that, guys, that's not the end. Then we've got to figure out if they're actually seriously going to play. And that is a debatable item right now. So that that won't be the end of it. That'll just be a game plan that might be used. Well, what what did what did this guest of yours? What what were his main concerns about? Uh, about is it about player safety? Is it about uh, the the optics of it? Or the the outbreaks in certain cities affecting campuses? What were his main concerns? That with. For example, Sankey said Monday, we need these numbers to turn around some. Paraphrasing, right? These 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 positive tests we're getting, this spike up in cases, we need those to correct some and show us the proper curve. Deaths are doing it, even though there's about a two-week lag time, and that could be a problem here in a week or two as well, again. Yeah. And he said... To get a football team together in this environment with all the cases that are going up, and in some of these cities, hospitals maxed out, and uh, just just with the overwhelming numbers that are being thrown out there right now, he said it's going to be tough. And he said football and basketball. You see, he puts basketball right with football as far as danger. He said, I just don't, I just don't see a way right now. We can we can do it, and uh, again, he doesn't make the decision, but he's a guy I really respect. I can promise you, this guy isn't like a lot of people on Twitter who want this to, to be the case and are running rooting for it. This guy's rooting against it, and he works in the ICU, and he's also a pediatrician, so he sees it around the clock. And his daughter, who lives here in Nashville, twenty three years of age, got it, so he's been through it with her, and she's okay. And um, he's just quite pessimistic right now, guys. Wow, well, I mean, yeah. that really does 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 make it hit home, you know. Uh, it makes you it makes you think. So, I mean, I know you have been openly against the idea of playing in the spring. When you yeah. hear when you have when you, when you hear these things from your guest, from a guy who I, who I think has a, a, a real understanding of what he's talking about here, do you right. still think that that's not really an option, or is that maybe the only option? Well, I think I think it's an option. Um, it will always remain, this is all we got, guys. We got to do this. But it won't represent what we're used to. And we don't even know in the spring if this is still an item. Because if it is, we're not playing in either. And for the players who are planning on turning pro, there's, many of them are not going to want to do it. It's it's going to be a really, uh, if we do this in the spring, and then we're trying to do baseball and basketball at the same time, I, guys, I don't... <laughs> I, I don't. I don't know how all that works. They don't know how it all works either. Now, now again, financially, 
I don't know if you guys saw this, but Jamie Pollard, incredible AD at Iowa State, yep. one of the best ADs in America, said that they project through August right now the loss of about $73 million. And that, that would include they're, they're taking into account football. Football would cost them about $45 million, he said. So the domino effect here that we've talked about is way more brutal than anybody thinks, meaning the average fan. Speaking of Bill King here on Halftime, Bill, how do you think Greg Sankey has handled this situation overall? Because you've seen different people say he's handled it like a champion. I mean, he's done everything he's could, and you've heard others kind of question the decision-making, I guess, is probably the best way to put it, especially some people view kind of falling behind the eight ball with the Big Ten announcement, the Pac-12 announcements. From your estimation, you're the king of college football talk. How would you how would you view how Greg Sankey and the SEC administrators – have handled for what's just an unprecedented position that they're put in right now? Let me put this in football terms. The SEC just went through the two best commissioners in the history of the planet, Roy Kramer and Mike Slot. Literally, they replaced Nick Saban and a football analogy with another Nick Saban, maybe even better than Mike Slot. Kramer to Slot. Sankey is about like hiring Bill Curry as your coach, okay? Probably can go seven and five for you. Not going to win anything big for you. And I'm talking about being a commissioner. I'm not talking about the individual sports. So we're lacking that leadership. I don't think he's done anything desperately wrong here. I don't think he's made a bad decision. I mean, everybody was canceling basketball. You can't say we're going to play here in Nashville and then everybody gets sick. I get that. And – and he's landlocked a little bit because these other two big leagues have already made their announcement, and he's probably going to have to make the same announcement. But he is not anywhere near, nor is it probably fair to compare him with, with the previous commissioner. People, people do not understand how incredible Kramer and Slive were. And, and Roy Kramer, when he created the BCS 92 guys, even though it had a lot of detractors, did more for the popularity of college football than anybody else. Okay, it created this massive controversy, which made it incredibly popular, which drove up the TV numbers a million times revenue wise. And then Sly took it from there and got autonomy, got playoffs, got full cost of attendance. It, it's so, guys, it's, it's a tough comparison. Let's get into a little bit of some football news that has been coming across here recently. We'll go to Georgia real quick. JT Daniels granted immediate eligibility uh, to go play for yeah. the Bulldogs and now. And now you look at it, that is an awfully crowded quarterback room for the Bulldogs. If if you're the head coach, who are you starting game one? Well, first of all, Jacob Eason can't get cleared from Georgia to Washington, but JT Daniels can. Right. So there's always <laughs> going to be inconsistency. Yeah. Uh, Tate Martell gets cleared. He can't even play a lick. And the only reason he left Ohio State is because Ryan Day, the new coach, told him you're not ever going to play for me. So he left. It gets cleared. But, and you have other people with folks at home sick. They can't get cleared. So, again, that, that, I know that's not your question. I don't think, I don't think we know. Uh, Daniel's coming off the knee. Now he's, he's healed up. And we haven't seen him rep at all. And if I'm Jamie Daniels, I'm wondering what he was told. Because they've got Jamie Daniels. Uh, they, they've got uh, Jamie Newman, sorry. They've got JT Daniels. They've got Dewan Mathis, who's coming off a of brain surgery. But he's, he's healthy now. He's a young a uh, quarterback out of Michigan that they flipped from Ohio State. They got a four star from Jacksonville there now, and they've got a rising senior, the class of twenty one, the Brockermeyer kid, who's a five star. So, guys, that's, I just gave you five, and all of them have been told how good they are for probably their entire lives. So that room's not going to coexist that long. And I, I see. I always thought Daniels was a next year guy, might not get cleared former five-star quarterback, and Newman's only got a year. Newman, If they don't play this year, Newman's out of it. He's got to go try and play pro ball. That's his last year, fifth-year guy. So I was a little bit shocked there, and I think it's a legit competition. I do know that Daniel's style is probably a more along the lines of what George is used to. I don't know if that will determine it, though. I want to get your thoughts, too. <clears throat> Excuse yeah. me, on... Barry Odom, and there were some articles been published about the, what kind of transformation or what kind of expectations Razorback fans should have that, of the impact that he can have on this defense that was just absolutely putrid last year. 
And he right. has a track record of the previous schools that he's been at, maybe not necessarily going from, like, worst to the best in the SEC, but being a respectable, maybe even a mediocre defense that could at least stop somebody if they need to. What, so what In your estimation, what are some realistic expectations or how much of a difference can Barry Odom make in year one for the Razorbacks? Here's been my theory for 40 years. You can trick up an offense with limited personnel, schemes and formations and, you know, smoke and mirrors. That stuff's legit. Now, again, sooner or later, you're going to have to line up and hit somebody in the mouth, too. But you can trick up an offense. I don't think you can trick up a defense much. I think a defense is all about it's, – it's about coaching, yeah. It's, it's, you got to have a good D coordinator. But I think personnel is harder to trick up on defense. I've thought that forever, and I still think it. And that's the problem he's got. Now, they may get a bounce because they were so bad last year, as you put it. Uh, but I, I don't think that's going to be a quick turnaround. If you're going to win games at Arkansas, I still think you're going to have to score a bunch of points, and you're going to give up a bunch of points. He's a solid D coordinator, guys. I mean, he really is. That's a good hire. But, again, you, you can't sit in a meeting room as a defensive coordinator and make something out of limits, out of your limited personnel. Fair. That's got to be very frustrating. He would never tell you that, nor would I if I was the coach. But it's going to be tough. All right, let's close on uh, on uh, John Chavis, now a ah. middle school assistant coach. Sounds like the kind of job where you're seeing the light at the end of the career and are ready to wind it down. So what did you think when you saw that, as, you, as you've called him before, Wavy Chavy is now coaching middle school football? What, do you know what his buyout there at the middle school is if it doesn't work out? You check that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You got those numbers? Couple Look, uh, yeah, it's, third, it's, it's third and Chavy Wavy. Yeah, third and Chavy Wavy. And uh, that guy hates me. I probably would hate me too because I've not been a big fan of his for decades. Look, I don't. as a person, I'm sure he's a hell of a guy. But he takes it personally because I don't think he's a very good D coordinator. And he got really lucky in 98 at Tennessee when the whole defense was a pro defense, right? I mean, these guys were all going to make money. It was an incredible group. Of, of talented players. So, look, I, I, I feel for the guy. Uh, I did not – I didn't even see it. You, you're the one that told me about it. I had no idea. Uh, so – but he's – look, guys, uh, as coordinator – now, he was, again, 98 was a national championship, and he coached another, what, 20 years plus. He's made a ton of money. Yeah. So, uh, third and shady wave, he's going to be okay. Well, the pressure's off if you're coaching middle school, that's for sure. Hey, I, I, don't, know, I don't know about that because there's some there's some testy middle school parents out there. I, I can attest to that. <laughs> you, you oh, can. I bet. No, you can. Yep. Bill, thanks for your time, man. Have a great week. Okay, guys. Thank Appreciate you. Appreciate it, Bill. Bill King from Nashville Sports Radio. Uh, our friends at Baxter Regional Care are ready once again to take care of your family again safely. Safe elective surgeries, safe same-day procedures, and safely seeing patients across all their service lines, which includes all Baxter Regional Clinics, ER, radiology, women's health, physical therapy, lab, and more. If you've recently delayed care because of COVID-19, Baxter Regional is taking all the precautions to make sure that there is no safer place to be. Services might look a little bit different, but their commitment to high-quality, compassionate care remains the same. That's Baxter Regional Care. Go to BaxterRegional.org for more information. You can wrap up the show today. Cherry on the top has changed my mind. 877-377-6963. Closing it up next.